तो जय हिंद सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट आई पी वी सिक्स हैडर फॉर्मेट बेसिकली दिस इज़ अ टॉपिक एडवांस टॉपिक बियॉन्ड आई पी वी फोर सो आई पी वी सिक्स इज़ अ एडवांस्ड वर्जन ऑफ आई पी वी फोर वाइल आई पी वी फोर हैविंग थर्टी टू बिट एड्रेस एंड आई पी वी सिक्स इज वन ट्वेंटी एट बिट एड्रेस सो वॉट इज आई पी वी सिक्स इट इज़ बेसिकली द एडवांस वर्जन ऑफ आई पी वी फोर आई पी वी फोर इज इंटरनेट प्रोटोकॉल वर्जन फोर एंड आई पी वी सिक्स इज वर्जन सिक्स बेसिकली इन नेटवर्क लेयर इन नेटवर्क लेयर देर आर सॉरी इन ओ एस ए लेयर देर आर सेवन लेयर्स बट इन टी सी पी आई पी देर आर फोर और सम हाउ वी कैन से दैट फाइव लेयर्स ऑल्सो सो देर इज अ लेयर नेटवर्क लेयर सो वी आर करेंटली यूजिंग आई पी वी फोर वी आर नॉट यूजिंग आई पी वी सिक्स आई पी वी सिक्स इज इन टेस्टिंग फेज नाउ अड इज इट इज इन टेस्टिंग फेज सो ऑल दो आई पी वी फोर इज वेल डिजाइन एंड वी आर यूजिंग इज आई पी वी फोर सिंस नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज सो आई पी वी फोर हैज सम डेफिशियंसीज एंड ड्यू टू अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कंप्यूटर इंक्रीजिंग सो सम हाउ इन फ्यू ईयर्स मे बी आई पी वी फोर एड्रेस मे बी शॉर्ट सो दैट्स वाई आई पी वी सिक्स केम इन एग्जिस्टेंस एंड दिस इज बेसिकली यूज फॉर अनसुटेबल फॉर द आई पी वी फोर इज अनसुटेबल फॉर द फास्ट ग्रोइंग इंटरनेट दैट्स वाई आई पी वी सिक्स इज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड सो दिस इज बेसिकली आई पी वी सिक्स डेटाग्राम हैडर एंड पे लोड द बोथ हैडर लेंथ इज थर्टी टू बाइट थर्टी टू बिट्स बेसिकली वट इज इन दिस दिस इज द बेस हैडर एंड बेस हैडर इज ऑफ फोर्टी बाइट्स एंड इट्स पे लोड पे लोड इट मीन हाउ मच डेटा इट कैन कैरी अलॉन्ग विद इट्स हैडर सो सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी फाइव बाइट्स इट कैन कैरी बट इफ Uh, modifying the IPv4, then what is the benefit of using this payload? The benefit of using this payload is the extension header. IPv6 is using extension header. What is the use of extension header? Extension header is a basic phenomena where we do not need the uh, the head and tail type of things. Uh, if there is a more bytes we have to send with IPv6, while in IPv4 there are a, a fixed packet size. that in all if there is a large packet and we have to make it frame by frame so in each and every frame there is a head and tail and each packet is treated as a individual frame while in ipv6 there is extension header so that the base the uh, main head is one and the tail is last so in between there are several uh, the large messages can be broken into several frames and one by one frame can be transmitted through the network line so the like for example in youtube channels this is the capability of ipv6 it do not stream or it do not uh, make <coughs> some uh, it do not load some time to make video available to you it is continuously playing at your system so this payload contain extension headers that is optional and data packet from the uh, upper layers so extension headers it is optional if your data size is up to 65535 then the one frame is itself sufficient if there is a more bytes needs to send if the size of your file is having for example 1 gb so what do, what will you do you do to create a packet in a smaller like one packet is of this this size next next packet is of this size and this size each and every frame so each and every frame must have the base header and the other things but in ipv6 header if the one frame size is this and we have to extend we have to extend this frame then what will we do next bytes came in existence in this data packets from upper layers also so there are several packets having a subdivision of a large packets and each and every packet do not have the base header and everything the first packet having the base headers and the head i think uh, head and the last packet have the tail so this is the beauty of ipv6 datagram header so this is the ipv4 uh, format datagram format so basically what is this this is uh, somehow this is uh, quite different with the ipv4 header format like in the first field version it is the same as ipv4 header the length is also same 4 bits the 4 bit length of version field show that this is the ipv6 header what is its sign here in ipv4 ip v4 it is 100 0100 it in it means this packets belongs to ipv4 while in i sorry this is in ipv4 
But in if we are following in IPv6, what is it? 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Sorry. 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. Sorry, this is not 1. Yes, this is and here 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So, this is IPv6. Okay. So, if you are seeing that if we are forwarding the IPv4, then it's, it is 4 and it is 6. 4 and 2, 6. Sorry, this is 0, 0, 1. Sorry. Yes, this is 6. So, this is 6. So, this is how we, uh, we are sending the uh, this version field. So, now the priority bit. Priority bit is also somehow that is related to IPv4 and IPv4 it is treated as a priority bits or in here is also treated as a priority. Priority bits, what, what, what does it mean? It means that it has the priority. Priority for what? Priority for that my data is important for you. So, it need to be transmitted immediately as I want, I, I am sending the packet. So, this priority set the priority of the packets. Then the flow level, then payload length, what is the size of this data, then a next header. Next header, it means if the size of data increases, then it is divided into several frames. So, the first uh, frame size is here, next is here, next is here, next is here and so on. Hop limit, hop limit is how many routers it has to pass, the data has to pass to reach its destination. The source address and destination is the same as in we are studying in IPv4. Next header, it means next header, next header. Header length, what is the header length now? The header length is now is the size of the data and this one. Okay. So, next header, if there are more packets need to send, need to be sent, along with of this one one data if the data size is increasing so next data next data next data and so on if the data is finished then this can be finished at this end or this end or this end okay so this is the format next header codes what is the next header codes for ipv6 this is if there is a zero then hop by hop option if there is a code of two then icmp protocol is in use if there is a six then transmission control protocol is in use so there are various uh, codes are there for next header and next header describe what type of algorithm or what type of protocol we are using for this. Okay, this is a priority for congestion control traffic. Like for example, if we are uh, if we are seeing this priority, so this priority means these type of different types of priorities. Like for example, if the priority which is four bit long, if the priority is zero, then there is no specific traffic that line is free for you and you can transmit the data without any hurdle. If the priority bit is 1, it means there is a background data. There is a background data like what is background data? Background data is a is a, for example, if there is a music. In music, there are some uh, musical instrument and your voice also. So, your boy voice is a foreground and music is background. Like for example, if there is a disturbance behind my voice, then the disturbance is the background data and my voice is foreground. So, there is a background data. If I am saying that we need to uh, transmit the data along with the background data or if there is a phenomena that background data can be removed from the foreground or foreground background can be separated again. So, we have to use this one. Two, unattended data traffic. Somehow, there are some packets uh, which are freely moved on a network traffic on transmission line and this data can be unattended. So, we can say if you want to receive or you want to send unattended data traffic or there are some free, so we can use that particular data also. So, in this case, we have to set the priority bit as 2. 3 for reserve for other purposes, 4 for attended bulk data traffic, bulk data, where there is a bulk data traffic, 5 is again reserved, 6 for interactive traffic. If interactive traffic is what? There is a traffic which is coming from destination. Once uh, somehow destination machine is treated as a source machine also, and the source machine treated as a destination machine also. There are two uh, nodes, and both nodes can be worked as a source and as well as destination. So there are two-way communication. So this is interactive traffic. Both can communicate at a time or as they want. Next is control traffic. If you want to control the traffic so that we can, our data can be freely moved to the destination, then we can use this 
bit stream also. Then this is the comparison of IPv4 and IPv6 packet header. Like for example, the header length field is eliminated HLN. HLN is available in IPv4 while HLN is not available in IPv6 just because of the length of header is fixed in this version while in that version the ha header length is not fixed. HLN is 20 fixed but what about the other data? So, but in this the header length is fixed. Okay. The service type of field is also eliminated in uh, IPv6. The priority and flow level work together in place of this particular service type field because the service type field is somehow later on it is treated as the uh, differentiated services. So, we are not using these type of services currently. So, somehow we are uh, modified the service field into priority and flow level field together over the function of service type field. The total length field is also eliminated in IPv6 and it is replaced by payload length field because total uh, length field is can be calculated with the HLN field. But here there is no HLN. So, that is why there is no need of total length field. But yes, there is a need of payload length. What is the size of payload the HP sorry IPv6 header can carry. So, it is necessary to have the payload field. The identification flag and offset field also eliminated in this IPv6. They are included in the fragment extension header because this is the beauty of this extension header. These are the extension headers. Okay. So, this we are using in this. TTL field is also replaced by hop limit. TTL field is exactly same as hop limit in TTL time to live and hop limit is the same. TTL, the name is time to live. Somehow, we can understand that how many, how much time in seconds, minute or hour or or any in, in the unit of time. But TTL field is counted as the how many router your packet has to pass to reach its destination. So, hop limit is the basic name terminology which can be better understood in place of TTL field. So, this is not uh, eliminated, this is replaced by hop limit word. Okay. The protocol field is also replaced by the next header field. Next header field, there are different types of protocols are there where we can use different these protocols. So, next header field define what type of protocol you are using. The option field in IPv4 also are implemented as extension header. The option field, if there is a size beyond HLN, so that particular uh, size treated as an option field. Option field is basically optional. So, this option field in IPv4 are implemented as in IPv4, but here in IPv6, it is implemented as extension header. So, this is the beauty of IPv6. Currently, if you are checking your mobile phone, if you are checking your uh, computer in IPv4 setting, you are always seeing that there is an option of IPv6, which is automatically assigned IPv6 ad address because it in testing phase. In IPv4, we are able to define the IPv4 address at our own or it can be decided by the network itself by using DHCP protocol. But in D uh, IPv6, it is automatically assigned to your computer machine, to your mobile or any device that is network connected. So, IPv6 is currently in testing phases and it is by default available in all type of network devices. Okay. So, th uh, that is why we have to understand what is IPv6. Extension header type. <coughs> So, we have studied that there is extension header type and uh, this is the beauty of IPv6. So, what is the extension headers and what are the different types of extension headers? Hop by hop options, source routing, fragmentation, authentication, encrypted security payload and destination options. In hop by hop option, there is a pad1, pad n and jumbo payload. Basically, these are the different options available with header extension header. Hop by hop option. How many hops? Pad 1 to pad n. If we <coughs> suppose there is a fixed length of data size, their data size is very short. So, we have to apply some padding to make it somehow the, the, this is a packet and this is a because a short packet do not have any any 
identification. So, we have to make sure that our packet size should be 32 bit or 64 bit. The source routing, the routing is important that extension header, the source routing must be there that this is the source and you need to follow the uh, the previous packet path. So, so uh, the all the packets follow the same path. If there is a congestion, yes, we can change our path accordingly. The network will decide what type of uh, path you can uh, for, uh, you, you need to follow. The fragmentation, yes, as in IPv4, if there is a large packet, we have to make fragments and it will show that this is the first packet or middle packet or the last fragment. So, in this uh, also, if there is a large packet, there are different fragments of that large packet, but in by using extension header, we can easily maintain this without keeping the IPv6 version field in each and every packet. So, this is the beauty of this. Authentication. The authentication field is missing in IPv4, but in extension in this IPv6, it is available because authentication, it is a privacy matter and privacy matter matters. So, authentication field is necessary in each type of frame that this is the uh, who is authentic to use that particular type of data and who, who is not authentic. Encrypted security payload also. What is the size of this data? The hacker do not have this knowledge. If hacker want to have what, a, what, what is the data length, it is not necessary for the hacker. But yes, for me, authentic user, it is required. So, encrypted security payload is there. Destination option. What is the destination? If uh, there is a, <coughs> because in, uh, if we talk about some uh, key one to one, it is a one to one option or one to many or, or one to uh, all, any yani broadcast. So, destination is also available, must be available in extension header. So, this is a smaller difference between IPv4 option and IPv6 extension header. So, what is the difference? That no operation and end of option in IPv4 can be replaced by pad1 and pad n option in IPv6. In IPv4, we are using either there is no operation or if there is an operation, then this is the end of options. But in IPv6, there is a pad n, pad2, pad3 and pad n option in IPv6, we have to replace it. The record root option is not implemented <coughs> in IPv6 because it was not used. The record root, what is the need to record the root? If the network itself able to identify the root, uh, the next packet we have to follow. So, there is no option, there is no need to record the root. The time is timing option is not implemented because it was not used. <clears throat> the source root option is called the source route extension header in IPv6. Yes, it is necessary. So, that is why it is available here. The fragment field in the IP in the base header section of IPv4 is moved to the fragmentation header in IPv6. The authentication header is new in IPv6. Basically, it is the requirement. The encrypted security payload extension header is new in IPv6. So, this is basically the major advantage or major feature of IPv6. But what is the problem? The problem is that I am currently using IPv4 and every machine using IPv4. IPv6 is in testing phase. But some devices are exclusively using IPv6. Or we can say if I want to move if I want to switch from IPv4 to IPv6, suppose let us say in a large network, my machine is using IPv4 and your machine is using IPv6. How can my data is transmitted to your machine? Because both, we both are using different type of addresses schema. Then the transition from IPv4 to IPv6, what is the method, different method we can use to transit from IPv4 to IPv6? Just because of there are large number of systems are available on internet, the transition of IPv6 to IPv6 cannot happen automatically or suddenly. It take a considerable amount of time before every system in the internet can move to IPv6. The transition must be smooth that no one can, uh, no one can disturb by using this transition phase. So, there are three different strategy we can use to transit from IPv4 to IPv6. One is a dual stack. 
another is tunneling, another is header translation. So, we can do the dual stack. In dual stack, what we have to do? Uh, currently, our system is using dual stack methodology because our system is using IPv4 and IPv6 is in testing phase. So, we are using both protocol at the same time on our single machine. So, this is dual stack. If you are using both IPs, both version of IPs on a single machine, because your machine is IPv4 and IPv6 and yours also. So, both machines are using both protocol. So, it means a protocol can be designed by using IPv4 and IPv6. If we are talking about the OSI reference model layers, then yes. On the network layer, the both protocol are using by the network layer, network layer. So, that is very easy. If I am using IPv4 along with, I am using IPv6 also. You are also using IPv4 and your machine is also using IPv6 by default. So, we can communicate very easily. There is no uh, hurdle between uh, communication between us. So, this is a basically very simple phenomena or very simple method where we can use both protocol at a machine. Okay. So, this is we are using. Another is tunneling strategy. If I am not using IPv4, then what to do? That routers, this router is using IPv4. So, in this diagram, you can see that this is IPv6 host machine and this is IPv6 host machine, but the network is using IPv4. So, there is a router which can convert IPv6 to IPv4 and it travel to this router by using IPv4 packet only. At this point, this router will convert IPv4 to IPv6. So, it will receive at this point. I am somehow, I am not saying that conversion. I am saying that this particular router can take the packet from this machine and assign a new IPv4 address and travel to this source to this destination. So, there is a packet which has the source machine name IPv6 and destination machine address as IPv6, but encapsulated in a packet whose source address is this IPv4 and destination address is this IPv4 and travel through this and we can use, we can say that this is a tunnel. This is an example that through this router to this router, all the packet assembled in a packet whose address is this router to this router. So, this travel after this, the IPv4 source is removed and originally, what it originally source machine is a destination machine, originally here is IPv6 is source machine and IPv6 is destination and moved to this machine. So, this is another example or another strategy tunneling. The last is header translation strategy. Header translation, this is very tough strategy. How? The header is transmitted to IPv4. IPv6. This is IPv6. This is IPv4. One is using IPv6, another is using IPv4. Then what you do do? You need to transfer IPv6 to IPv4. Conversion, the header translation. It means whatever the field are there in IPv6, you need to uh, convert IPv6 header format into IPv4 header format. So, this is another method. Okay. So, there are, this is the header translation procedure, then IPv6 at mapped address is changed to IPv4 address. The value of IPv6 priority is discarded. The type of service field in IPv4 is set to be 0. The checksum for IPv4 is calculated and inserted in the corresponding field. The IPv6 flow label is ignored. The compatible extension headers are can be converted into the option and inserted to the IPv4 header and same may have to be dropped. The length of IPv4 is calculated and inserted into the corresponding field and the total length of the IPv4 is calculated and inserted to the corresponding field. So, this is a conversion method from IPv6 to IPv4 and similar way we can convert IPv4 to IPv6 also. So, this is a reference. So, this is how uh, the header format and how we can use IPv4 and IPv6. Thank you.